How's it going everybody? Nick DiVirgilio here, and today we're gonna warp and quantize inside of Ableton Live. Just the other day, we thought it'd be really fun to walk around Sweetwater's campus and get some random recordings and then bring them back, put them inside of Ableton and see if we can't manipulate them and move them around and make a group. It's a lovely day in Fort Wayne, Indiana. There's a sun up there somewhere on the other side of the clouds. This is Jack, John, and Amanda. When we're not here, they actually come to life and do really weird things. So shh, don't tell anybody. Come on in, guys. A lot of fun stuff in here. We're inside the Sweetwater Music Store at our campus. A killer music store. If you've never been here, you gotta check out our music store when you come visit, the, uh, come visit our place. It's amazing. This is the drum room, and I think I'm gonna grab a djembe and do a little groove. Hmm. All right. Here we go. Cool, that's all I need for that. But I think I want a backbeat sound. So I'm gonna go over there and grab the shekere and play that. All right, this is a shekere and the way I'm gonna play it is not the real way to play it. The real way to play it, and I'm really poor at it, is something like this. Okay, in a nice Latin groove. But what I want to use this for is just the backbeat sound. So the tempo I was at was about here. Let's do it. All right, that was it. Let's go play some guitar and some bass. Ooh, that was fun. Let me grab a bass guitar and do the same thing. This is the Spectre Timber Jr. Has a cool sound. Let's try that with the bass now. Nice, that'll definitely work. All right, the final piece of this little puzzle, we're gonna go over and see the fabulous Dave Martin in our recording studios. He's gonna do a little something special. Let's go. We are in Sweetwater Studio B, and next to me is Mr. Dave Martin. Dave is our in-house bass player, one of our in-house producers, and a fantastic recording engineer. In fact, we've done a lot of records together over the years. We have indeed. Yes. Now, Dave does something else that's pretty special, and it's this clapping rhythm I saw you do just yesterday, and I thought it would fit perfectly in this quantizing and warping how-to video in Ableton Live. I'm gonna take your clapping and warp it to fit what I recorded over in the store just a second ago. Cool. Do you mind being warped? I've been warped a long time. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna step back and you are going to do this clapping thing and I'm gonna record you with the H4N Pro by Zoom. Ooh. Okay, go for it. Wow, yay. Thank you, Dave. All right, back to the video studio we go. All right, so just back to, uh, back to ground zero. What I wanted to do was go into the uh, theater. What time is it? Can we see if something's available? You know what would be really cool is to get a couple people to clap in the theater with that reverb thing on and have it go <sighs> Let's just see if they're there. Is the theater open, you think? Oh, then you guys can be in our video. Oh, great. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is great. Do you guys mind being in a video, a how-to Ableton video? Not anymore, we don't. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> What's Ableton? It's a, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, we're in the theater at Sweetwater. This is the theater team. This is the fantastic theater team. These people are stars. Spencer, Crystal, Michaela, Tim, Austin, and Jimmy Blankenship. All right, and they're gonna do some clapping for you and we're gonna put this in our video. Ready? One, two, three, 
four. Did I tell you these are stars? These are stars. Thank you, people. Bow, a, a bow for the folks. Woo! All right, back to the video studio we go. Thanks, gang. Thank you. I'm back in the video studio here, and just the other day, we walked around Sweetwater's campus and got some fun, funky recordings that I'm gonna show you how to warp inside of Ableton. But before we do that, I wanna first talk about quantization because after you warp something, you can also quantize it, and it's important to show you that first. So what I'm gonna do here is make a simple groove that's kind of out of time, and then I'll show you how easy it is to quantize it. Let's go. So the first thing I wanna do here is make something like a four bar loop that I'm gonna record into. So how you do that is into your clip right here, double click. At the bottom row, you'll see it show up and just give it your length. Right down here at the bottom, it says length. I want it to be four bars long. Boom, there you go. Now, this clip is gonna be four bars long once I start recording. Hit the record button. In two bars, I'll start playing. Here we go. That's not very good, that's, that's really out of time. I feel like I'm falling down a bunch of stairs. So let's see what happens now when I quantize. If none of the notes were highlighted, just hit Command A, then they're all highlighted. Then you control click on my Mac here, or if you do have a mouse that has a right click, you just right click, go up to the top. There's also a shortcut you could do where you do uh, Command U, that's also quantized. Like everything in Ableton, there's three, four, five ways to do the same thing. But here we'll go like this, Hit quantize. Now hopefully you saw a bunch of the notes adjust. Let's see what it sounds like after I've quantized. All right, it's not the greatest groove in the world, but it's now completely locked in time to the grid. Another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn these hi-hats down a little bit. So these notes right up here are all the hi-hats. You can highlight just those and pull down the volume of all of them at the same time. Let's also turn off the metronome. All right, so again, really easy to quantize. Highlight what you want to quantize. Like, so for instance, right here, I have just the hi-hats highlighted. I can quantize those separately apart from the rest of the notes in the groove. Now, so this is quantized directly to the grid. Another thing I want to show you real quickly before we get into warping is how to give these kind of, you know, programmed drum parts a little bit of feel. And that's where you go into Ableton's groove library. Let me make a little space here. I'm gonna squeeze that down. Right here, in about in the middle, is a squiggly line circle. When you hit that, the groove pool opens up. Now I have one loaded in. I'm gonna erase that, so I'm just gonna start from scratch for you. Where you find all your grooves is you go down to your packs. And now this, if you don't have a lot of packs already in Ableton, these are third-party sounds and all kinds of other things you can get off of Ableton's website. But when you get the suite or whatever version of Ableton you have, you will get a core library. Double click on the core library and then there's a bunch of sounds and samples, all kinds of stuff. And then the bottom folder is your swing and grooves. And what's so cool about Ableton, they give you a lot of different choices. So you have hip hop feels, Latin, uh, logic, MPC style feels, all kinds of stuff. Let's open up one of the MPC feels. I'm gonna give you some more space so you can see, see what's going on. Now these are different algorithms with different you know, feels. They'll put the backbeat a little bit before the beat, a little bit after the beat, kind of move things around just a little bit so it feels a little bit more human. All you have to do is pick one, drag it on top of your clip. Now that feel is there. Let's see what it sounds like. Whoa very strange. Now you can see here, it's based on eighth notes and so on. Now if you scroll down, you're going to get a lot of different things. Since there's a bunch of 16th notes in this feel, why don't we grab one that has 16th notes in it? How about this one right here? See, that feels a little bit better because it has 16th notes in its algorithm. Then I suggest you just move up the sliders and the faders and, and see what it sounds like. There's one for quantize here. There's timing, random, velocity. Ooh. 
So all of these things, the sliders, the randomness, the velocity, is just manipulating that groove a little bit, and the best way to figure out exactly the groove you want is to get there and just experiment. Drag a bunch of the feels and grooves in onto the clip and see which ones you like best, and then make a favorites folder of your favorite grooves. Then when you get into other songs, you start building grooves and all kinds of other things, you'll have favorites to go to. You won't have to be doing a bunch of searching and deep diving. So that's really about it. Quantizing inside of Ableton is super simple. Either quantize hard to the grid or go inside the groove pool and give your drum beats some nice feel. So now we're gonna get into warping, one of the coolest things that Ableton does. And warping is just a fancy name for time stretching. You can take any piece of audio, dump it inside of Ableton and stretch it and morph it to fit the tempo you're working on. Now, if you get really extreme with the tempo where you go really fast or really slow, you, you might manipulate your audio too much and it'll sound weird. So the key is to find that kind of sweet spot, that tempo sweet spot, and then if you go up 10 BPM, down 10 BPM, anywhere in there, you'll be totally fine. Let's get started. So like I said earlier, we walked around the building and recorded some fun things, and we're gonna start with one of those right now. I'm gonna start with the djembe and shekerde part, because those are the most percussive sounds, and we can set our tempo and our feel to those. So let me show you something. I dumped this piece of audio inside of Ableton, and as you can tell here at the bottom, this is all the WAV files. This is everything that was recorded onto this clip. But there's a lot of stuff here. I don't need nearly this much stuff here, and it's gonna get confusing. So what you do is, inside the clip edit region down here, you have two arrows. The one on the bottom is your play start point. Okay, wherever you put that bottom triangle, that's where the clip will play from. The one on the top is your loop marker. We'll get to that in just a second, but that's where you have your start and your end points of your loop. For now, we just wanna know where to start the audio and see what's going on. So let me play from here and see what's going on. Okay, that's the piece I want. To make this even easier, where did I start? I clapped at the beginning of the recording and kind of set the tempo. Let me see where that starts. Okay, right there. Let me get it just close. It doesn't have to be exact. Again, you're just finding your start points. Now, let's find the end point. It'll loop right around there. So you don't have to be exact again. Let's just get the end point and put it somewhere around there. Now you have something to work with. Now, check out the clip here. You have a bunch of dark grayed out parts and the light gray. The light gray is what's gonna play. We don't need all the rest of this stuff and we don't wanna get confused with all this extra stuff around in our visual space. So we can get rid of it simply by right clicking, control click on my, iP on my uh, MacBook Pro here. Just hit crop sample. It takes away all that other stuff, and now you're left with just that little piece of audio. Way easier to work with it like this. I'm gonna make a quick little left turn right here. I'm gonna show you something in the Preferences tab that you should know before we dive in deep here. So let's just go over to Live Preferences. In the Preferences panel, you have Record, Warp, and Launch. Now I, and right here in the Warp and Fades section, I have Long Warp Short Samples as Auto, auto warp long samples as off. I find that way easier to have it to win. So like if you put in a whole song, a lot of people, a lot of DJs will put in a whole song, warp it and quantize it to fit their, their set, their live set, and they can manipulate the song wherever they want to then. But if you put it in to warp that whole song at the beginning, you're gonna have to go in and basically do a lot of cleanup to start with, which to me is not a great workflow. If you like working like that, there's nothing wrong with it at all, but I prefer to have it long warping samples as off. Okay, it's worth showing you that. So then you can start from scratch. Okay, before we hit the warp button, the one thing I wanna do is sort of figure out what the tempo of this piece of audio is because I didn't record to a click when I played the djembe in the store, I just played freely. So let's see about where we are tempo-wise. So over here on the top corner of the screen, you have your metronome settings and your tempo settings. I'm just gonna play this piece of audio and tap along and see what the tempo is, or close to what the tempo is. Here we go. All right, so I'm right around 108, 107, 109, somewhere in there. So I'm just gonna pick 
a round number there and make it 108. So now I know that's kind of my core tempo of this piece of audio, and I'm gonna try and fit everything else to this. After we get everything warped and quantized and sort of all set up, you can then speed up and slow down your tempo at that point. So we'll get there in just a second. So now we're here. Now let's warp this piece of audio. You hit the warp button, Ableton analyzes that piece of audio and sees what it thinks is the tempo, puts in a lot of uh, warp markers and stuff. Let's see what it sounds like after I hit the warp button. Oh, it sped it up quite a bit. Okay, all you have to do, right here, sequence BPM, put in the tempo you want, 108. Now play. much closer to where we had it, right? At this point, I wanna show you a couple of things because Ableton has a bunch of algorithms when it comes to warping. Now, you don't have to get too deep into this, but it is worth telling you about this now because you can also warp and quantize, you know, uh, melodic pieces of music, full songs. You're not always going to be warping and quantizing drum beats. So right down here, right under the warp button, you have six different algorithms for warping. We're on beats right now. Now over here, I love this window in Ableton over here because wherever you have your cursor placed, anywhere on the screen, it'll tell you what you're looking at. So if you're ever confused, just make sure you have that window open, which is this arrow right here, this triangle, I should say, right here. Everything's a triangle inside of Ableton. When you have it open, that's the screen that'll give you those descriptions. So let's go down through these algorithms real quick. Beats. Great for rhythmic audio, like drum beats, obviously, okay? Tones mode is the second one. That one's really good for single notes like bass lines, okay? It's a tone, but it's a single note. You don't have any sort of harmonic stuff going along with that particular thing. Single bass lines is great for this one. Texture mode is great for polyphonic sounds. Repitch mode is really nice if you wanna quantize a whole song, warp a whole song. If you're a DJ and you have songs on your old records, your vinyl records you wanna put into Ableton and use those as part of your set, you can easily do it, and repitch mode's really good for that. Then you have two forms of complex mode, complex and complex pro, and those are really good for crazier stuff, stuff that's really dense. You use those algorithms there, okay? I hope that helps. Again, with Ableton, you need to dive in and just try all of these things, and you'll figure out which ones work best for you. But for drum beats, anything percussive, beats is always the one to go to, and that's where we are now. So let's keep going now and put this piece of audio nicely in time. First thing I'm gonna do here is, you'll notice at this piece of audio, I clap at the beginning of it. That's just to set my time. That's not where the loop is gonna start. Let's find the downbeat. There you go. So when you put a piece of audio into Ableton and you hit warp, you'll notice Ableton reads all of the transients or what it thinks is the transients, okay? It's pretty good about it, and puts in these warp markers. That's the little tiny gray triangles you see there. Every time I go over a triangle, there's a warp marker and a line. I'm going to double click. Whenever you double click on one of the line, a yellow box on the top shows up. That's one of your warp markers. Now I know that's the downbeat, so what I wanna do here is I wanna set that as beat one. Hover over the top of that yellow box, right click, control click, right? And just say set one from here. Boom. Now it's gonna play from beat one. That is beat one of your loop. You'll notice now it's a little bit wonky. There's dark gray and light gray. And that's because we haven't set the loop parameters yet. Very simple to do. Right under the word loop, position set, beat one, and enter. That is beat one of your loop. Now how, do you, how long do you want the loop to be? Well, I want it to be four bars. It's already on four, so if it wasn't, you would hit four, hit enter. There you go. Now, the loop bar, when you hit the button, it's, see, your loop is four beats long. So you're good to go. Now let's put the loop in time, because I don't think it's gonna be directly in time yet. Let's see what it sounds like. With the metronome, this is how you'll know. Oh, not bad. A little off. That's pretty in time already. So what I wanna do here is get rid of all this other extraneous stuff we don't need to see. Again, just do the crop loop thing. Control, click, crop sample, you're good to go. Now, just the audio you want is there. So what I would do at this point for me personally is find the qu each quarter note of this particular piece of audio. Two, double click on that transient, 
Let's find from there. Three. Start from there. Boom. And then what, I, then what you do now is whenever you put one of these loop markers in, this is how you can stretch it to your heart's content. You can go crazy with this if you want, but watch how I grab this loop marker, pull it to the right, stretching the audio. Pull, pull to the left, it's stretching the audio in that direction. I want this right on beat three, so I put it directly on beat three. I'll take quarter note four, put it directly on four, and two is just a tiny bit off. Let's squeeze in so I can show you. That's the downbeat of beat number two. See, it's just a little bit off. I want it right on the beat just so I know it's solid. Each quarter note is solid. There you go. Let's listen to it now. So this beat is in time already. Pretty good, right? And I didn't really even put in a lot of warp markers. I only, only picked the quarter notes. Let's speed up and slow down the tempo and see how it's working. Because this is where you'll know. Slower. Remember how I told you when you slow down or speed up a particular piece of audio too much, it'll start sounding wonky and a little bit weird? So 110, 108 was about the prime spot for this loop. I'm down at about 82 and you'll hear it starts to do all of this kind of crazy stuff. You know, and that's not very musical. You wouldn't use it like that anyway, but it's worth showing you just so you can hear what it sounds like. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good in time already. And thankfully, I played this particular piece of percussion somewhat in time, so it was easy to get this loop set. I don't have to do much more to it. If you put a ton of warp markers in a piece of audio, sometimes you'll start to hear the warp markers. So I tend to put as little as possible when I'm trying to warp and quantize a piece of audio. That way, it sounds as natural, and then you just have to adjust a little bit to get it in time. We will see more of how this works when I put in the guitar and the bass and some of those other things, okay? Let's get on to the next piece. Now, I'm gonna grab this same piece of audio because this same piece of audio also has the shekere where I was just doing sort of the backbeat, the clap sort of sound. Drag it on in and put on a different clip so I don't get confused with the one I was just working on. Stop that. Whip up one, double click, there it is. That's all that again. So. Same as I did before, I want to find the start point because I don't, again, I don't need all of this stuff. And by looking at it, I know that the claps are way down here somewhere. So let's play it from here and see what it, we got. Oh, first thing I want to do, turn off the, that'll confuse you, turn off the metronome. Here we go. All right, that's the sound we want. Hopefully this is not confusing for you. So that particular sound, boom, boom, those are the backbeats. That, I want that to be on back basically on beats two and four of the groove. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So the starting point isn't going to be on the very first sound. You want a little bit of, a, a little bit of space before that. So if I play it from here, two, three, see? Two, three, four. If you give yourself a little bit of space before the clip, you'll be able to have it lay in the proper spot without having to do a bunch of manipulation later. So let's just give it a little space in front and a little bit of space in the end, sort of like that, and then get rid of all that other stuff. Crop sample, see you later. That's the piece of audio we wanna work with now. All right, now hit the warp button, boom. It says it's about 97. Let's get it to our, close our, to our tempo, which we had at 108. Sequence BPM, 108. Boom, you see it moves it and manipulates it a little bit to, to put it where you want to go. You'll see under the loop button, after you hit these buttons, the warping and things like that, all of this stuff is gonna be kind of out of whack. So the position of your loop is always gonna be from beat one. So just hit one, it starts it there. And this is only going to be four bars long. Now it knows my, my loop is four bars long and it's gonna start right at beat one. Let's see where we are. I can already tell it's a little bit off. Put the, put the uh, metronome on. It's out of time, right? But again, this is a super simple fix. Ableton already read all of the warp, all the transients for you. Okay, you just need to put the warp markers there. So there's one there. Double click, puts the warp markers in. 
super simple. Okay, now you can easily move these all around anywhere you want. See, I can move boom, that, I can move that there, anywhere like that, but I wanna try something. Let's quantize this. Let's see if it quantizes and where it puts these warp markers. Control, I mean, I'm sorry, control click, there you go, up to quantize. Now it only moved it a little bit. It still went along with the grid, so it put, it on, it put these claps in weird spots on the grid of 16th notes. Now it sounds weird, but those, it's actually in time. It quantized where it thought the proper spot was. So it did do its job, but that's not what we needed for this particular groove. So just command Z to get out of that. So a very simple way. We want these claps on two and four. So just take that piece of audio, that warp marker, put it on 1.2. There's beat two, and then beat four of the first bar, beat two, beat four of the second bar, beat two, beat four of the third bar, beat two, Ooh, I was missing one down here. Double click, get your warp marker, beat four of the fourth bar, and there you go, that's the end. Let's put it on loop. I bet you it's right in time. Here we go. Just right. Cool. Now there's a little bit of leftover spot, and just because I want to be OCD about this, I'm gonna get rid of this little extra bit down at the end, crop sample, there it is. Let's see what this sounds like with the djembe that we just put in a second ago. Nice. Speed it up a little bit. Slow it down. Very cool, very easy to do. Now we're gonna get into it, something that's a little bit harder. We're gonna quantize and warp some Melodic playing, something melodic, not a drum beat. Over here, I'm gonna grab the guitar and bass clip that I have. Again, I'm gonna put it below the other one just so I don't get confused. We've got a bunch of stuff here. So let's see what we got. I'm gonna move my play starting point because I know I had a bunch of talking and stuff earlier on. Let's just find, I think this is where the audio for the guitar is. Okay, let's just find out where that starts. I think it's around this point. Oh, and again, turn your metronome off or you'll get real confused really fast. One more time. Okay, now, because I don't really remember, because it was a couple of days ago we recorded this audio, what's up here? I'm gonna make sure I'm not getting the wrong thing. Oh, that's the bass, so we'll do that on the second pass. So now back to the guitar. I'm gonna zoom in, let's get right on the start that's my play start point. Okay, let's play this piece real quick and see what we got. It'll loop right around that point. So again, I just wanna leave myself a little bit extra space. We don't need all this other stuff. So the end point will be somewhere around there. That looks good. Just, this is general for right now. So we have less stuff to look at and we just wanna focus in on that piece of audio. So again, control click, crop sample, everything else goes away. Now I just have this piece of guitar to work with. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens when I hit warp. Okay, it thinks this is about 88, 86.49. And that's because, you know, I started, it's not, I didn't play this to a click in there. I was just free forming it. So, and I, it does sound a little bit slower than the other beats, but that's okay. First thing I wanna do here is, before I even change the BPM, the sequence BPM, I wanna find the downbeat of the guitar part. Let's play it. Boom. Zoom in, there you go, that's the first beat. And again, you know, when you hit the warp button, it's putting in warp markers where it thinks the transients are. So if we pull that play marker to that first downbeat, let's see what it sounds like. When you're into live, I wanna make sure you know this, I'm gonna say this right now, you're always gonna need to tweak a little bit, okay? 
Ableton is amazing about finding these transients, finding these markers, and giving you the starting point. But it might not always be perfect just by hitting the button, okay? So you'll see it gave a transient, it gave a warp marker a little bit after the initial attack of that first guitar chord. Because that's where the, the peak of the transient was. That's where it hurt it. So now you're going to have to, you know, move it back a little bit. It's very simple to do. Just zoom in. You can see where the whole thing started, right around this point. All you have to do is double click and make your own warp marker. You don't have to use everything that Ableton puts on. You can make all of your own warp markers if you want. And if you want to get rid of the one that's over here, just click on it and then hit delete. That one goes away. So now I know this is the downbeat. I'm going to control click. I'm going to set one there. That is our starting point. Cool. There we go. Now it's playing faster because it thinks it's 86 BPM. I want this to be uh, 108. Type in 108 and it should be somewhere closer to our tempo. The reason it did that, the reason it moved things around after I hit, I changed the tempo is because I didn't get rid of that other audio before I did that. Okay, so that's another tip and trick of always getting rid of the extra stuff you don't need because it'll keep reading it. Even though you're not playing it, like you grade it out, you don't want it to play, it'll still think that's part of the clip when it's trying to analyze the time. So it's a simple fix. Zoom in, put your play, play marker right on that starting point. Boom, there you go. Now, so I don't make that same mistake again, I'm gonna crop this sample and get rid of this stuff. Boom. Now, that's just the audio we wanna work with. Let's see what it sounds like now. Putting in it at the tempo we want. That feels closer to where we want it to go. Let's see what it sounds like with the metronome. Oh. Okay, it's a little bit wonky. Now, what I'm gonna do here, before I get into manipulating the piece of audio here, I'm gonna quantize it just the way it is. And I think you'll be able to hear how it puts in too many warp markers when you just freely quantize something like this. Also, we wanna make sure on the correct algorithm, okay? Remember, it has the different algorithms over here, beats, tones, textures, and so on. I'm gonna start with texture mode, which is usually good for this kind of thing. If this one's not working too well, I'll probably go down to one of the complex or complex pro algorithms. But let's start here for now. You can also adjust the grain size and the flux. This is how Ableton reads those transients and adjust that too to get it just right, okay? And again, you just gotta go in there and mess with those numbers to see what you get. Let's see where we are here with quantizing the thing all together without making any adjustments. I think it's gonna be strange, but let's check it out. So Command A, let's highlight this whole clip. Control, click, quantize, look at all the markers it put in. Let's check it out, let's see what it sounds like. Whoa. It's a little weird. It's just, it's reading every possible thing it thinks is a transient and then quantizing that to the grid. So it's too much. You don't need all of this. So we're going to get rid of that. I just wanted to give you that demonstration real quick. So with a piece of audio like this, first thing I want to do is, again, find the downbeat of each quarter note. I'm going to turn off the uh, metronome for now just so I can hear this a little more clearly. That's beat two. You'll notice it's ahead. It's a little bit past beat two, but we're not gonna make the adjustment yet. I just wanna find these downbeats. There's number three. Play from that point. Right there is number four. Six. Almost done. There's number seven. Eight. Okay. Now, at least we know where the quarter note, the downbeat of each quarter note is in this guitar part. Obviously, they're not lined up with the tempo that we're at right now, but we can make that fit just by doing a little bit of dragging. Grab each one 
and put it in its spot. I'm just gra- dragging each one and putting them directly on the quarter note. There you go. There's extra space here. That's because I did something out of order here, which I, could, I just told you this a second ago, and I, comp- I went out of order, so I apologize. Under loop, the numbers are all wonky, right? Let's, make, let's clean this up so we know exactly what we're working with. The loop is going to start at beat one, boom, and it's going to be eight bars long. Bam. All right, now we're good. Extra stuff you don't need, crop that out. Later. Okay. Let's see where we are in time now. I mean, let me put the uh, metronome on. Here we go. Better. Piece of, a little adjustment there. Okay, it's close. So now what you do is work on a quarter note at a time to see what you need to adjust. Zoom in, start at the beginning. Now check it out, see all these different transients it has in here? All of those spots, you can move around and put them in time to subdivisions of the, uh, of the time here. This particular groove, that beat right there was always beat four of each bar. Find certain beats that you can lock into and that might help you find the spot to always adjust that particular part of the groove. It's a little bit weird here. This ba da da da, those are all 16th notes. E and a one, one E and a two, that kind of thing. Ba da da da. So let's grab each transient and lock that into those 16th notes. This one is a little bit past, see? That's the 16th, 2.3.4, and this transient is a little bit past it. Let's drag it over. And then beat four is right there. That's good. That's not too bad. There's a little bit something going on here. Let's listen from beat four. Beat number four is a little bit ahead of the beat. So let's put that back. See, I, and I'm just manipulating tiny little sections now, 16th note at a time. So wherever you put in that warp marker, whatever's, you can move it, whatever's before and after it by little tiny chunks if you want. Let's see what's going on now. This last beat, this last bar, I should say, is a little bit out of time. Let's check it out. Yeah, see, because beat number four, this should be the downbeat of beat number four. It's a little bit past. Let's move it in. What's it sound like now? Much cleaner. All right, let's see what this sounds like with the other stuff in our groove. Nice, totally locked in. Loop. Sweet, we're on our way to making a groove of completely random audio that's not, that wasn't recorded to a click. We're adjusting it and putting it exactly where we want it to go. Nice. Let's get the bass part in here and keep moving on. So that same wave sample with the guitar and bass, I'm gonna pull it in. Again, put it on a different clip slot. So I'm not messing with the others. Now from before, I remember that down here, this was the bass down here in that part of the clip. So let's get our start point down here somewhere. Play. Oh, turn the metronome off. Okay, pretty close. Let me zoom in a little bit more. That should be about the starting point. Cool, and it ends right about here, so just save us a little bit of time. I know the end point is past here. That's the end of the the playing. I need a little bit of space at the end, so I'll put the end point just a little bit past it and get rid of all this other stuff. Control, click, crop, sample. See you later. Nice. 
All right, same process as before. I'm gonna hit the warp button. It reads the transients. First thing I wanna do is find the downbeat of the bass part. So let's play it. Okay, now it's playing fast. Remember it read, it at, it read the transients from the count in, you hit warp and it's just it's reading the transients. It thinks is what's right, so it gives it that tempo. Don't worry about that to start with. You find your starting point and then you can go from there. That's our starting point, nice. Now, like with the last one, the peak of the transient's right there, so it thinks that's the, where the transient should be. With the pick sliding across the string of the bass, you know, it's a little bit before the peak of the transient. That's actually where it should start, so it's right around here. Just double click. I want that to be beat number one. Control click, set one from there. Click on that marker that it put in there and delete it, you're good to go, all right. Now, we don't need this earlier stuff. Control click, crop sample. Later, this is the piece of audio we wanna work with. Let's put it at the tempo we want to, it to be at, 108. See what it sounds like. Nice, it's closer to what we wanna work with. Let's set our loop position from beat one. This is gonna be eight bars long. So what you're doing here is when you set the loop length to the length you want, it'll, it shows you how long it should be, okay? The loop length is eight bars long, which is right there. You can tell that the audio goes past that set length. So you're gonna to need to do some adjustments, super simple. So now I'm gonna find the downbeat of each quarter note like I did with the guitar part. Right there, there. didn't play, see it stopped. My end play point is right there. It's not gonna play past that, but our audio is past that. But now we just drag our transients to the quarter notes like we just adjusted and it should work out fine. So there's beat two, beat three, beat four, five, six, seven, eight. Now see how I pulled the audio into the play area? Let's see what it sounds like now. The metronome. Pretty locked in already. That's pretty good. Before we, I wanna try something else, but first thing I wanna do is get rid of the extra bits. Again, crop sample, see you later. Now, one thing I didn't do, cause I was going so quick here, I left this on the beats algorithm and it seemed to work okay. Just because it gives you these algorithms doesn't mean you're locked into that. You can try anything you want. There really is no rules for that. Just some work better than others. But tones is usually the great algorithm for single note bass lines. Let's just see if it sounds any better. Nice. Everything, I turned up the grain size a little bit to make it read those transients a little cleaner. The only thing I heard, I thought everything was locked in nicely, was this last bar, bar eight. Sounds like it was a tiny bit off. And I can tell right now because beat number four, that's the, beat number four is just a little bit past. Just pull that back. And I think we might be good to go. One more playthrough. Locked in nicely. Cool, nice and in time. Let's play it with the other stuff. I think we're gonna be good to go.
it's pretty darn close. Now, what you can do, since this is a video, we could be here for a really long time getting really deep into the weeds on all the nitpicky stuff. So what I would suggest you do when you're doing this at home, you put in stuff like this, you quantize it, you warp it, you get it in time, go through each bar, each little piece, and make sure you lock in every little piece. It's really easy to do. Find the transient, make your adjustments, and hear what it sounds like because now you're layering four different tracks that are all sort of percussive and rhythmic. If you have a, a beat here or there that's a little bit off, a little bit of a flam going on, just find that spot in that particular clip, make a couple adjustments, you can lock it right in, no problem. A couple more quick things. We're gonna grab Dave Martin's clap thing that he did <laughs> and see if we can't lock that in with our groove. So it's right here. Let's move it up a little bit. Now again, look, at he played a bunch of stuff. There was a bunch of talking and everything. So let's just find the best little chunk that we can find. Now I know a lot of the playing is way up here. We don't need any of this earlier stuff. I think Dave was telling jokes or some stories or whatever. We don't need that for our groove quantizing and warp sample right now. Let's see what we got. Oh, everything else needs to stop. Just that clip we want. Here we go. Oh, and turn off the metronome. Okay, that's what we wanna work with. Now this is gonna be kind of a little bit difficult. Again, Dave played this freely, no click, no nothing like that, and he was just going for it. So who knows what tempo he was in. He could be all over the place. Let's see if we can't make it work with this groove. I think we can. That is our start point, right around there. Let's get it as close as possible. Great. I'm gonna get rid of the rest of this stuff because I don't wanna see it. Okay, there's also a little bit of extra here. I'm gonna play this clip here and see what we got. <laughs> okay. Somewhere around there. We're not even gonna use all of it, but at least we're cleaning up and we're condensing the clip to more of what, the, just the spot we wanna work with. Get rid of the extra stuff. All right. I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of the first half. Boom. That's all I need for this. Let's play that one more time, make sure I got the right spot. Boom, yes. Zoom in, this one is the downbeat of the next bar. So that's where I want the loop, I want us to loop back to the beginning. Let's get close to it. Then I'll get rid of the rest of the stuff and we can lock this into time. There we go, that's all I need. See you later, extra stuff. Now, let's see what happens when we hit the warp button. Okay, found some stuff. It thinks it's closer to what our tempo is, but I wanna clean up the loop area. So starting from beat one, bam. This is only going to be two bars long. Great. Now let's put it at the tempo of our song here. See what's going on with the metronome. Uh. Okay, it's all out of whack, but we can fix this. Turn the metronome off so we don't get confused. Let's first find the downbeat of the second bar. This will help us out. See, the downbeat for beat two is actually passed beyond the downbeat of beat two. So it needs to get pulled back. Now let's see what it sounds like. Did this help us at all? With the metronome? It's closer. Okay, beat four is a little early. Let's put that on beat four. So this is what you have to do, but you can manipulate any piece of audio and warp it and quantize it and move the transients around, just like this. It's hard to hear, but this transient right here is beat number four of the second bar. 
Let's see what we got. It's a little wonky in the second half. I think I got it. I think I got it. That sounds pretty clear. Now let's put the loop on and see if it'll loop in time. Here we go. Pretty cool. Again, a total random piece of audio with a little bit of tweaking. You grab those transients, move it in and out, and you'll get it locked into your groove, no problem. So this was a percussive sound, so I used the beats algorithm. There's a little bit of extra on the end. I wanna get rid of that. Okay, now let's get into the sound of this real quick because you're not gonna hear it in this groove. It's gonna need a little bit of love because it's quiet, it was recorded quietly. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over to some audio effects. Let's grab a little something. Give this a little bit of uh, love here. How about overdrive? Let's distort his hand clap. Grab the plug-in, drag it directly on top of the clip. Boom. <laughs> now let's listen to this clip. Woo, hold on. It's a little loud. I'm gonna pull it down here, turn everything else off. I wanna hear the clip only. Let me bring the volume down a tiny bit. Check it out. A little reverb. And also putting a little bit of this distortion on and pulling down the low end brought that kind of whoomph that happened at the beginning of the clip, it took it away. Ooh, cool, we're getting close now. That sounds pretty cool. Let's see what it sounds like with the rest of our groove. It's all in time. One final thing to put in. We went into the theater. We got a bunch of the theater team there to do get up on stage. They looked gorgeous up there and they did some clapping for us. So this will be a, give us a nice strong backbeat on two and four. Let's get their claps in there and put them in time with our groove here and we'll have a nice little something. Turn everything else off. Let's see what we got. Double click. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff here. I know we don't need this stuff at the beginning. Let's get closer to where I think the claps will start. Nice. We don't need all these claps either. So just get what you need. It'll make life easier for you when you get into the actual editing. A little bit of that low end stuff. We don't want to hear that, like the wind noise. Okay, those are clean. So let's go to the middle right here. Start from here. Nice. End point I'll make somewhere in the middle of one of these claps. One more time. Let's just zone in on this and get the exact spot we need. Play from there. Perfect, okay, that's what we need. Let's get rid of everything else. Crop sample, boom. Now this is gonna be really easy to put in time because we're just looking for the beats two and four of the groove. We gave ourselves a little bit of space before the first one and the first one looks like it's right around on beat two. So let's put a warp marker there. Beat four is a little bit early Beat two is a little early. Beat four is a little early. Let's get it there. Let's make sure our loop is in the correct spot. So starting from beat one, and it's only two bars long. It's looking pretty good. Let's see what we got going on here. With the click. Oh, I didn't have the loop on, sorry. Put the loop on so we can hear it. Nice, perfectly in time put it up with our rest of our groove and let's see what we made. Okay, don't hear the claps that much. Let's make, let's, let's use 
Ableton's tools to make this sound a little bit bigger. All right, so I soloed the clap track. Let's give it a little bit of reverb. I still don't think it's gonna be loud enough because it, was, you know, it wasn't recorded like pristinely. So what I'll do is I'll grab a, just a basic generic compressor, drag it on top of the clip. This already raised the volume a little bit right now. Let's see what it sounds like with the track before doing anything. Oh yeah, you hear it a lot louder now. Pull it back. And there you go, a bunch of random audio we put inside of Ableton Live. We're able to manipulate the timing of the audio, the timing of the percussion parts, the guitar playing, totally random clapping parts, and make a groove. Now, is it absolutely perfect right now? No, because again, this video, I don't want this video to be like two hours long. When you want to tweak those little subdivisions of your grooves, when you put them inside Ableton and start quantizing, just get into the weeds, move those transients just one sixteenth note. In between the notes, wherever it needs to go, you will find that spot. It's very easy to do. Grab it, drag, and you're good to go. And you can lock in things so easily. Quantizing and warping is a fantastic feature inside of Ableton. It makes it so much fun to manipulate all kinds of different things. I hope you like this video, and I hope it encourages you to go out and record and make music with Ableton Live. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Click right here for more videos just like these, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.